Refrigerators are used to slow the processes that lead to food spoilage. The reason, as we discussed in a previous video about collision theory, is that temperature affects reaction rates. You should recall from previous videos about rate laws. For example, we could have rate equals K times the concentration of A to some power N. We know that temperature affects rate, but when we look at the rate law, we don't explicitly see temperature involved in the rate law to affect rate. That's because the temperature dependence is present in the rate constant K. Increase in temperature results in an increase in the rate constant K. This relationship can be described by the Arrhenius equation. In this equation, the capital A is the frequency factor which is a constant particular for a given reaction. In the exponential term, we have the R, which is a gas constant, but since we're talking about energy, we'll use the value of the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. The T, capital T, is temperature, which has to be in units of Kelvin. The E with the lowercase a subscript is known as the activation energy. The activation energy is the energy a reaction must meet in order for the actual bonds to begin breaking and forming. In an energy diagram, such as you see here, the activation energy is defined as the energy difference between the reactants and what we call the transition state. The transition state is the point where bonds are starting to break and form between the different atoms that will be undergoing changes in the chemical reaction. The activation energy is the energy that the collisions must meet in order for the reaction to take place. This is the sufficient energy that we talked about with collision theory. The other parts of the energy diagram you should take note of are the energy differences between the reactants and the products. This difference between the energy of the reactant and products is known as the enthalpy change. Another important factor to note is that at a given temperature, the higher the activation energy, the slower the reaction will be. So if we're comparing two different reactions and one of them has an activation energy of 20 kilojoules per mole, and the other has an activation of 12 kilojoules per mole, the reaction with a smaller activation energy of 12 kilojoules per mole will be the faster reaction. Another important note is that activation energy does not change for a reaction as the temperature changes. That brings up the question of how does temperature change the reaction rate? You should recall that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample. In this figure, we see the distribution of molecules at a given temperature that have particular kinetic energies. At the first temperature, T1 in blue, we see that there's a particular distribution of energies. In this case, only a small fraction have enough energy to overcome the activation energy for a reaction to occur. At a higher temperature, indicated in red, we see that there are more molecules that have sufficient energy for a reaction to take place and to overcome the activation energy. This means that more molecules have sufficient energy, and since more molecules have sufficient energy, the reaction will take place at a faster rate. After watching this video, you should be able to identify the terms in the rate law that are dependent on temperature. You should be able to describe the different components of energy diagrams, specifically the differences between activation energy and the enthalpy of reaction, and you should be able to identify the transition state, the reactants, and the products you should be able to predict the relative reaction rates based on activation energy values for different reactions. Finally, you should be able to explain why higher temperatures lead to faster reaction rates.